I love this view. I'm just, I'm such a good mood. I'm in such a good mood this morning. The view is fantastic. The weather is nice. Oh my God, the furnace only came on like two or three times last night. It's so warm. <laughs> it's already warming up. Oh, I'm so happy. Anyway, I'm going into Vegas today. Uh, but I do want to see Valley of Fire before I go. Hopefully I, I can make that happen. But it is Sunday. I don't know. State parks are weird. You never know with state parks what you're going to get. So we'll have to uh, play it by ear. But hopefully we get to see it. If not, I'm actually, my plan right now is really screwy. Because like, I'm going down to Vegas and then down to Havasu and then back up and around. Because there's a lot in like southern Utah and southern uh, Colorado I didn't get to see that I really want to. And I have to get to Santa Fe. And when my sister comes, we're doing the same loop. But I don't think she's going to want to go up into that far north again. So I'll have to soak up the heat while I get it for now. Because I'm probably going to go back up and freeze again. <laughs> I'm just a masochist. I put myself through this. But honestly, it, like last year, I feel like last year I, I was traveling. I didn't really have much of an idea what I was doing or where I was going. Um, this year, like this is an adventure mobile. It is for going and seeing things. It is not to be like a luxury resort, nice beaches and comfortable all the time. Although there is days like that. You know, <clears throat> this thing is meant to handle off-roading and snowstorms and all kinds of other monster things like that that I throw at it. So that's what I'm using it for. This is an adventure mobile. All right, let's have breakfast. So, like I said, this is Moapa Valley Overlook, and I don't know what the deal is here and why people are camped here that look pretty damn permanent. Like some of them, all these barrels and tarps outside, they have, like it looks like they're here snowbirding or something like that, and they're going to be here for months. Uh, but from the, um, from the campsites.net listing, it did state that there was no limit for the camping, so that is kind of bizarre. You don't find many of those, and I guess that's why it's attracted so many people, especially people of the uh, snowbirding variety, as you can tell. A lot of fifth wheels, a lot of newer campers, um, a lot of trailer campers, a lot of big A-class RVs. Not a lot of camper vans. <laughs> this is, um, yeah. That's cool, though. Maybe I'll meet some of them before I leave today but I do have to make some miles pretty quick. There's a big X here. X marks the spot? I don't know what that means. All right, before we go to uh, Vegas, it is Valley of Fire National, uh, Valley of Fire State Park. So it's run by the state of Nevada, which means I have to pay a fee. But you know what? I think it's gonna be worth it. sandstone that you're used to seeing rich in iron makes them red I guess and uh, we've been seeing them all across the trip but here it's like there's so much of it and it's so much redder <laughs> than anything else I've seen on the trip so far oh my god anyway it's wind swept carvings that are like all morph it looks like it's melted rock right but it's the wind that's eroding it that way and uh, it actually makes really good climbing rocks, so here I am climbing up some high stuff. A little spooky, but a lot of fun. Hi. <laughs> 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 well, 
Well, come on up here then, you big coward. That's enough. You talk too much. Everyone ever tell you that? Champ, you're not climbing. <laughs> you found a stick in the middle of the desert. What a guy. What? Well, come on up here then. Stop talking like that. That's so rude. I went into town, into Vegas. Lovely place, Vegas, but um, kind of bored of it already. Got all my chores done, laundry done, food, groceries, whatever else I have to do in cities. But you know what? I'm kind of over it already. I'm going to go back in, probably tomorrow. But right now I'm at Lake Mead. Champ's excited. He, he knows there's water. And we're going to go swimming. Now it's like December and uh, Lake Meads is glacier fed from way back in the Colorado River, so it's not the warmest water on earth, but I haven't been swimming since like in, you know, Chicago, Lake Michigan, so um, I'm itching to get in there and I could use a good bath, so we're going to kill two birds with one stone. Champ could really use a new bath because that guy stinks so much. It's not that he stinks, it's like, watch this, so much dust. This is like, he's just a dusty dog, everywhere you look. Right here, it's so dust, so much dust. All right, let's get this dog washed up. Right, this is crazy.
Champ, who is that? So, <laughs> we're coming up the oh, hill. Oh, oh. Yeah, I know. That was a coyote. Or a wolf oh, oh. or something, but I think it was a coyote. The big one. This guy, man. Didn't see him for the longest time. We're walking right up on him. The coyote oh, sure oh, as oh. shit saw us. Oh. No. Oh. Now you're talking up. See, this is the point. He's like, he barks when it's way too late. Anyway, it's kind of cool. A little coyote. Didn't want much to do with us, just kind of wandered off. It was just one on his own, it's not really a big deal. But I gotta keep my eyes peeled. Now every shrub looks like a coyote to me. <laughs> Pretty wild that he's just wandering around in the middle of the day like that. At first I thought it was a German Shepherd that belonged to somebody. And from far it really looked like that, and probably on the video it might even look like that, but once you see him moving you're like, wait a second, that's no Shepherd. You know, at first I really didn't believe that was a coyote. I really thought it was a German Shepherd, but as you see it climbing up the hill, and you see the way it's moving, you're like, that's not a German Shepherd. He's pretty big. I don't know, man. What's with coyotes? They're getting bigger lately. Too many champs wandering off into the woods and getting eaten by coyotes. That's what it is. Making them big. Anyway, tonight I'm, uh, I've already got my jammies on. And uh, I'm going to make some curry. Use up some of that. Uh, I have a lot of tofu that I opened up and didn't finish, so i got to fry it up and make some curry and just soak in this warmth, man. The door's open, toes out. It's good to be alive today. It's good to be alive. Some of us, you know, got nice and clean and stayed clean on the walk home. Some of us didn't, did we? Who rolled in the dirt? Who rolled in the dirt, huh? Is it you? Was it you? You rolled in the dirt? I can't keep this guy clean. I don't know. I mean, I tried, right? That's all that counts. Try? I mean, he's gonna be dirty either way, whether I wash him or not. But at least if I tried, I get to ease my conscience a little bit. talk about this curry. I made a lot of curries lately, so I thought I'd talk about it a little bit. First I put the tofu in, let it brown up a little bit, and then just as it's getting brown I'm going to throw in some carrots here to add a little sweetness. You got your kind of meaty bits here with the poshish, onions, and I like to throw tomatoes into my curry just because it's kind of like a really question mark? Yeah, it's going to change it up. And then of course, you know, the spice must flow. The spice must flow, so we got the spice here. And I'll be adding the curry powder and then a can of coconut milk and voila. Instead of rice, I'm using just a little bit of quinoa. And that is it. That's my curry and it is so good. And then I always leave a little bit of sauce for tomorrow morning's breakfast and drop a couple eggs in it. Mm. Curry man, all about that curry. Thank you. 